Hello everyone, I am Bhavna Sharma, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, Genetic Data Noida. In management accounting, we have started with marginal costing. Uh, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about break even chart, margin of safety, and E factor. Now, in the previous lecture, we have already discussed about the break even point or break even sales. So, the uh, showing the break even in the uh, graphical form is the break even chart. So, here on the uh, x axis, output is taken, and on the y axis, cost and as well as the revenues are taken. So, uh, the company can put their uh, output units on the x-axis and whatever is the cost and revenues maybe in thousands, hundreds, crores, lakhs that can be shown in the y-axis. Now the sales line will start from the zero point. So this is the sales line. Cost line will not start from zero because it may because there is always a fixed cost which cannot be zero even when the output is zero. So we can take cost line from wherever point but it will not be zero. So, so cost line will never start from zero. So this is the cost line. Now when the cost is more than sales, this area is known as loss area. When the sales are more than cost, that is the profit. So this is all the profit area. Now the point, this point, when the cost and sales are equal, that is known as break-even point. Now this is the angle of incidence that we are going to discuss later. And margin of safety, these two points we'll discuss it later. So this is when the, we show all the break-even point in the graphical form that is known as break even chart. So basically we say that break even point is that point when the cost and sales are equal, the venues and the cost are equal or when there is no profit no loss situation. So for this company this is the break even point. So at 30,000 units and we can say the 5 lakh amount is the break even. Now, when number of units are expre expressed on x-axis and cost and revenues are expressed on y-axis, now three lines are drawn. Fixed cost line, total cost line and total sales line. Now, in this graph, we find that there is an intersection point of total sales line and total cost line. And from that intersection point, if a perpendicular is drawn to x-axis, we find break-even unit. Similarly, from the same intersection point, a parallel line is drawn to x-axis so that it cuts y-axis. There we find break-even point in terms of value. So that is break-even sales. So this is how the formal pictorial representation of break-even chart. Now the assumptions related to this breaking in chart are that all costs can be separated into fixed and variable costs. Fixed cost will remain constant and will not change with the change in level of output. Variable cost will fluctuate in the same proportion in which volume of output varies. Like price of variable cost factors, wage rate, price of material. Right, they will remain unchanged. Selling price will remain constant even though there may be competition or change in volume of product. Number of units produced and sold will be the same so that there is no opening stock or closing stock. There will be no change in operating efficiency. There is only one product or in case of many products, product mix will remain unchanged. 
product specifications and methods of manufacturing and selling will not change. So these are the some of the assumptions of rate even chart. Now next is angle of incidence. Now angle of incidence is an angle formed at intersection point of total sales line and total cost line in a formal break even point chart. So in the chart I have shown you the angle of incidence. So that is known as the where the angle is formed at total cost and sales line. So if the angle is larger, rate of growth of profit is higher. If the angle is lower, rate of growth of profit is lower. So growth of profit or profitability rate is depicted by angle of incidence. So this is the angle of incidence. Intersection in the total cost end. So higher the angle of incidence, that means more is the Now next is cash break even point. When break even point is calculated only with those fixed costs which are payable in cash, such a break even point is known as cash break even point. That means where the fixed costs are paid in cash. So where the cash cost comes, then that is known as cash break even point. This means depreciation, other non cash fixed costs, they are excluded from the fixed cost. In computing cash break even, because in depreciation actually there is no uh, outflow of cash. So the formula to calculate cash break even point is cash fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. Otherwise, for simple break even point, we use the formula of fixed cost upon contribution per unit. Now next topic is desired profit. Sometimes the company wants to know that how much uh, sales should be done to get a particular profit amount of profit. Like if you want to have uh, 50,000 as a desired profit or 1 lakh uh, profit we require for a quarter. So that can also be calculated. So desired profit uh, likewise same in the case of break even point. We can calculate desired profit in units also and desired profit in volume or amount also. So the formula to calculate desired profit in units is fixed cost plus desired profit divided by contribution per unit. Or if you want to calculate sales for desired profit, then the formula is fixed cost plus desired profit upon PV ratio. So you can see. The formula is same as that of break even point, only in the fixed cost in the numerator side we have added the desired profit. So if you want to calculate in units, then you will take all the uh, desired profit and contribution in unit. Then we have to calculate an amount, then we will take the amount for desired profit and, and fixed. So let's discuss an example. Uh, the sales turnover and profit during two periods are given as follows. For first period, sales is 2 lakh, and for second period, sales is 3 lakh. Likewise, the profit for first period is 20,000, and profit for second period is 40,000. Now, on the basis of this, the company wants to know that what amount of sales will yield a profit of 50,000. That company needs or desire a profit of 50,000 for a particular period. So they want to know that how much we can uh, do the sales to get this amount of profit. So the formula to calculate the uh, desired profit is as we have just discussed, is the sales to earn desired profit is fixed cost plus desired profit upon PV ratio. Now, in the question, we are given only two, three things. One is the sales, one is profit for two periods and desired profit. 
so that means we are given the sales in the question it is asked that how much sales will yield so we need to calculate the sales we are already given desired profit now we have to calculate fixed cost as well as pv ratio so first we'll calculate pv ratio now the formula to calculate pv ratio is contribution upon sales into 100 now in this question there is no total cost or fixed cost is given so that formula cannot be used so other formula that i have discussed in previous lecture was that change in contribution upon change in sales so again for contribution we cannot calculate because of the absence of variable cost so now instead of contribution we'll take profit so we have taken the formula as change in profit upon change in sales why change because the sales and profit for two periods are given that is why we are taking the change so change in profit is like for second year the profit is 40000 for first year it is 20000 so that means the profit has increased by 20000 Same is the case for sales. For sales, for first period it is two lakh. For second period it is three lakh rupees. That means sales have increased by one lakh. So there is change in profit of rupees twenty thousand and change in sales of rupees one lakh. So just put it in the formula of PV ratio. That is twenty thousand divided by one lakh into hundred. So here PV ratio for this particular company is twenty percent. Now second we have calculated the PV ratio. Now second we want to calculate the fixed cost. So based on this formula we can calculate the fixed cost for a period. Now sales for desired profit is equal to fixed cost plus desired profit upon PV ratio. Or if we want to calculate fixed cost, we'll take fixed cost here, and this PV ratio will go on this side. So this divide will become multiply, and this plus desired profit will be minus become minus on that side. So we have just taken all the values on one side in order to calculate the fixed cost. Again, for sales. So we have taken for first year. So for first year sales is two lakh multiplied by PV ratio. PV ratio we have already calculated just now. So we'll take twenty percent minus profit. So profit is given as twenty thousand. This we are calculating for first period. So here we'll get fixed cost as twenty thousand. likewise if you want to calculate for second period the fixed cost will be same so instead of first year sales we'll take here as 3 lakh 3 lakh into 20% minus profit for second year is 40000 so 3 lakh into 20% is 60000 minus 40000 will become 20000 so if you calculate for first period or for second year fixed cost will be same so now now we have to calculate the main thing that is what is being asked in the question that what amount of sales will yield a profit of 50000 so fixed cost you have already calculated that is 20000 plus desired profit is given in the question 50000 divided by pv ratio that we have calculated that is 20% so you will put all these values in the formula that is 20000 Plus fifty thousand divided by twenty percent. So the company needs to sell at least rupees three lakh fifty thousand to earn the desired profit. So in this lecture, we have discussed break-even chart, angle of incidence, and desired profit. We'll discuss the other topics in next lecture. Thank you. That's all for today.